man discovers half a century old stolen treasure in an abandoned high school restroom. Abandoned buildings have their own charm. Be it the decayed rustic fixtures and windows or the wrecked structures of the walls, they all have a story to tell. These buildings act as a mirror to the human soul, stubborn and enduring the test of time. The mystery behind the broken hinges sparks a world of imagination. If only those walls could speak and unveil the bizarre tales hidden beneath the rubble. This story is about one such abandoned building, an old high school in Illinois named Centralia High School. The building had been abandoned for decades until the year 2019, when it was bought to be renewed and built into a church. During this quest of renovating the old building, one of the plumbers came across something straight out of a mystery novel. From the outside, it looks like nothing unusual, just an old building. But once we step inside Centralia High School, we're greeted by a dreary scene. The broken window glasses led in scattered sunlight to the dark, narrow corridors, which were once buzzing with the laughter and chatter of children. The dismantled benches and boards lay in a corner of the empty classrooms, covered in ashes. The school didn't always look the same. Centralia High School was once one of the most renowned schools in town back in the 1940s. But all good things come to an end and for this school it was the modern era. With smart classes making its way into the education system, Centralia High School found it a little difficult to keep up with trends. As predicted, parents began to enroll their students in modern equipped schools with the latest technology and facilities. This resulted in Centralia High School falling short on students, which ultimately led to immediate bankruptcy. Since then, the gates of the school have remained closed. The building has been abandoned for decades now and as a result it has given birth to a lot of rumors. The most obvious one was that the school building is haunted by the ghost of a girl who committed suicide on the second floor. While most people don't believe such stories, there are always exceptions. The current owners of the building have been looking for buyers for a while now, but unfortunately nobody came forward with any offers. The building has been showcasing a first sale sign for years. The owner has lost all hope of ever finding any takers because people probably believe the rumors about the building being haunted. Seth Baltzel, a pastor for the City Hope Church, had been making queries about the ownership of the abandoned high school. Baltzel must have found the price of the building to be perfect because, at the beginning of 2019, he made the purchase. Baltzel had plans of letting the abandoned building give back to society in the best way possible. He wanted to convert the building into a City Hope Community Outreach Center and Church. That way, the abandoned high school will find a way to be alive and full of people again. Converting a school into a church doesn't happen in a day. While Baltzell didn't share his dream with anyone at first, he did need help to make it come true. He started the process of hiring workers for renovating the building and altering its structure into a church. But this process was more challenging than he'd assumed. Baltzell assumed he'd have to select workers based on their skills, but there was one factor that he forgot about. Every worker kept rejecting to work for the haunted high school. The pastor was in a really difficult situation. Making the purchase wouldn't be fruitful unless he could successfully renovate the building. After a long, tedious process, Baltzell finally managed to gather a team of workers willing to work on the building, and now it was time to get to it. The team consisted of carpenters, plumbers, and construction workers. The workers would reach the site as early as 5 in the morning and work till sunset. Baltzell was proud that he'd managed to assemble a hard-working team. The structure was fine to begin with, but the main changes were on the inside. The structure of classrooms and restrooms needed to be taken apart before constructing new rooms as per the church layout. Slowly, the inside of the building began to fall apart and new construction was commenced. By the end of that month, the ground floor was almost ready and the tearing down of the second floor had started. This floor had more classrooms than the ground floor and the plan was to break them down to create praying rooms by combining two classrooms. A duo of plumbers began to work in the restroom on the second floor. Their task was to get rid of the old bathroom toilets, fittings, and textures and replace them with new ones. The plumbers assumed this to be a fairly simple task and planned to power through so they could finish before sunset. Little did they know, they were in for a long day. The plumbers reached the second floor bathroom and unlocked the door. The broken tile pieces on the ground crunched beneath their boots as they stepped forward to examine the room. The restroom was a sight straight out of a post-apocalyptic movie. The dull paint fell in fragments, leaving the walls barren and dusty. The toilets were broken in places and covered in filthy marks. The plumbers realized it's going to be a long day getting things sorted. Besides, this was no ordinary renovating project. 
This restroom was in ruins, and they could say that because for a plumber, replacing fixtures is a fairly ordinary task. The plumbers were working their way around the restroom, taking it apart slowly and putting it back together better than before. They were on their last few pieces of fittings now, when one of the plumbers found himself struggling to remove a vent behind a toilet seat. It seemed like a weight of some kind was pressing on it and the pressure behind it was making it hard for him to take it out. The plumber took out his bag of tools and began to crack the area surrounding the vent. At first, it felt like it wouldn't work, but after struggling with a vent for a few minutes, the plumber managed to take it out, and what followed next was something he couldn't have foreseen. As soon as the vent came out, a whole load of debris came falling from it. The plumber was confused about how so much junk could collect behind the vents. He began to push the fallen rubble aside when his eyes caught sight of something. Turns out the wreckage wasn't trash after all, and he may have just discovered something which would make headlines. Among the fallen debris, the plumber spotted an old molded wallet. He was confused about how it managed to find its way into the vents. But it didn't end there, because when he bent down and examined the vent with a flashlight, he saw a whole collection of wallets tucked away inside it. The plumber decided to call Baltzell and let him know about his little discovery and to say the pastor was thrilled would be an understatement. Turns out when he bought this old abandoned building, he was hoping to come across some 70-year-old findings that haven't been discovered yet. The plumber may have just granted his wish. The plumber showed the discovery to the pastor and they began examining the contents together. He had managed to find not one, not two, but an entire collection of 15 wallets inside the vent. Baltzell realized that the wallets have remained tucked away inside that vent untouched for more than half a century. Baltzell began to open the wallets and check the insides. The contents consisted of identification cards and old photographs. Turns out they belonged to the girls studying at Centralia High School in the 1940s. But what were they doing behind a vent in the restroom? Baltzell made a wild guess, assuming the worst. All the wallets were empty on cash, which can only mean one thing, they were stolen. The thief took out the cash and stacked the wallets behind the vent, leaving their IDs and photographs. The wallets were made of leather and mostly faded and tattered after all this time, but given everything, were still in a decent state. Baltzell wanted to return these wallets to their owners, but it wasn't as easy as it sounds. He decided to take out the IDs and photos from each wallet and go through the details. Turns out most of the photos were from 1945 or 46, meaning most of the owners may not be even alive today. Even if they were alive, they could have moved away to a different state or country in all these years. Maltzell thought the best solution as of now would be to find their next of kin and return the wallets to them. Now that he had a plan in mind, the pastor had to figure out how to make it work. He decided the best way to reach out to people would be through social media, so he put out a Facebook post putting the details about the incident along with a list of names from the ID cards and a picture of the stolen wallets. His post read, while working on the old high school in Centralia, Illinois, we recently found a stash of what we assume are stolen wallets from the mid-1940s. While someone took the cash, they left behind all the pictures, information, and other documents. I'm gonna throw some names in here of what appears to be mostly women, so these are probably maiden names. If you know the owner or family member, we'd love to get it back to you. Baltzell didn't have much hope when he put out the post, but the response he got was amazing. He watched in astonishment as the likes and shares started to roll in. People were commenting and sharing the news to help him find a family or a relative of the owner. Despite providing such clear identification details and people sharing the post thousands of times, the results of the social media search were not proving to be effective. Nobody was able to find any of the owners who were alive, nor were they able to find any relative, until one day when a person contacted Baltzell regarding a name on his list. The user informed the pastor that she's related to Betty June Sissom, a name on Baltzwell's list. Betty lived in Centralia and attended the now diminished high school where these wallets were found. She graduated back in 47 and now was an 89-year-old woman living in Chesterfield, Missouri. When the word got out that an owner had been located, the people from KSDK News wanted to deliver their wallet to her and record a reaction for their YouTube channel. After getting Baltzell's approval for the same, KSDK sent out a reporter with a wallet to meet Betty. The reporter from KSDK found herself outside Betty's front door in Missouri along with her camera crew. Once seated and ready for the reveal, the reporter pulled out the wallet neatly wrapped in a plastic package and gave it to her. Betty was excited to open it, her astonishment vivid on her face as she took a look at her long-lost belonging. Betty began examining the wallet. She told the reporter, I can't believe after all these years that I've... 
It looks like it's old. I remember it was red. The wallet was now a faded shade of brownish orange, but it looked like it could have been red at one point. Betty remembered losing her wallet, but she never thought she'd see it again, that too after so many decades. She went ahead to examine the contents on the inside. Aside from slight surface damage, the contents were in decent condition. They were clear enough for Betty to recognize them. The very first picture is of a little girl and boy, and Betty told a reporter, that's me with a little boy by the name of Jimmy Kane, and I had a crush on him. I must have been about in the third grade or fourth. Betty began to pull out more pictures from the wallet, most of them containing different young men, presumably more of her crushes. Oh my goodness, look at the boys' pictures I have. It's quite a shock and it's really exciting to see these pictures. She couldn't believe that the photos managed to survive so many years and were in such good condition. The wallet also contained the photo of Betty's brother, who joined the army during the Second World War and passed away. The photo meant so much to Betty, her eyes were glistening with tears. She didn't have any other pictures of him, so for her, this was worth a million dollars. The wallet also contained photos of her family members, but the process of discovering personal items didn't end at photos only. Betty also found her social security card, which she remembered searching for back in the 40s. Except she didn't know it was in her wallet, which had already been stolen by then. When asked what Betty thinks about the 15 wallets being found in the vent, she revealed she had no clue her wallet had been stolen. She always assumed she misplaced it somewhere. But the news of discovering 15 wallets was surprising to Betty who said, I can't imagine somebody stole all those wallets and put them behind the toilet in a space I didn't even know was there. Meanwhile, Baltzell's post was still on his Facebook in hopes of finding more people, but so far there have been no other finds. The post has hundreds of comments from people all around the country. A person even provided obituaries to account for four women on the list. But other than that, there's no news about any other wallet owner. After hearing about Betty's story, the post blew up on multiple social media platforms. People were appreciating the efforts made by the pastor and talking about what an amazing discovery it was. A user suggested these wallets could be claimed by a museum if no owner was found. However, many of the users were also wondering who the culprit was. People were saying it was really smart on the culprit's part to take the money and throw the wallets away, because without the wallets it can't be proven they are the thief. Some people believed that hoarding wallets belonging to female students in a vent was creepy and had serial killer vibes written all over it. It's highly unlikely to find the culprit behind this act, the person who stole the wallets all those decades ago. Chances are they aren't even alive today. But Betty was hopeful her schoolmates can get their lost wallets back and be rejoiced in the same way she was able to. I'm sure the other people whose wallets they found, hopefully they're still alive, would be as excited as I am, she told the reporter. Betty was grateful to the pastor for putting in the efforts to create something which helped her reunite with her stolen treasure. She hopes he's able to help more people and wished him luck. There have been no further reports about whether Baltzell was able to connect with any other owner or relatives of the owners or not, but his endeavors were truly remarkable and appreciated by all.